what up guys the bench buddies are back with our first mlb video based on this year besides the players videos it's gonna be my record predictions for this year and there will be some surprise teams making the playoffs in this one but before i get into it make sure you hit that subscribe button down below where we will be doing that giveaway at 500 subscribers and all you have to do to be entered into that one is to be subscribed to our channel so don't don't miss out on that and we'll start with the AL East predictions. And yes, you were looking at that correctly. There's only one going to be a wild card team from the AL East. I have the Blue Jays being that team and the Yankees winning this division by one game at the end of the year, at the end of September. And for me, I think this division is going to beat up on each other and the Blue Jays are going to be the lucky ones. And the Rays playoff, you know, hopes of five straight years are going to end here. They're still going to have a very solid year, but I think they are due to miss the playoffs one of these years. Uh, the hitting is just the big question mark for me this year. Glasnow is already on the IL. McClanahan has to carry yet again. Rasmussen, Springs, they need to have another career year like they did last year. And I don't see that happening to be consistent to make the playoffs. The Orioles, I think they're a team that a lot of people could see squeak into a wild card spot. I think they are just going to miss out. Uh, you know, they are going to be, be a fun team to watch. Very young, but I just don't think in September they're going to have enough to propel them to a spot. And then the Red Sox, well, Red Sox are, you know, kind of rebuilding, but not at the same time, signing some veterans, let some pieces walk. And their big thing is pitching as well with Chris Sale. And then the rotation behind him is a big question mark. Uh, but we got to talk about the Yankees being at number one. They are probably one of the favorites out of the AL besides the Astros to win the American League. And that's because, well, Judge is back. They re-signed him to a massive contract and made him the captain. Uh, Donaldson has looked okay. Stan, you know, nothing crazy, but the prospects of Volpe, Dominguez, I mean, those two guys look very good this spring. And I think the pitching is going to be just as good or even better as last year uh, with Garrett Cole leading the charge. You know, Carlos Rondon, you know, he is out for the first month, but if he has a very successful year when he gets back, that rotation is going to be tough to stop, especially with Nat Nasty Nestor. Moving to the AL Central, I have the Twins winning this division and the guardians another team that could make the playoffs but they are going to miss just like those rays with the same record at 86 and 76 the white Sox around 500 my tigers above 70 wins which i think is the goal for them this year and the royals above 60 which is very doable uh the twins will start at the top winning this division because i think this is the breakout year where they finally get to go to the playoffs correa is back buxton is healthy right now as i'm making this video the whole team is healthy besides Polanco, and when he they get him back, then I think this team could be contenders. The Pablo Lopez trade is going to be huge for them. They get a good starting pitcher for a rise, and I, I really like that trade. Uh, you know, Lopez, Gray, Joe, Ryan is going to be a very solid one, two, three in this AL Central compared to, you know, the Tigers and Royals who have almost no pitching. And then you got to go to the Guardians who have just as much pitching, but just not as enough hitting for me. You know, this is a team that didn't hit a lot of home runs last year, but they found other ways to win. And I think this year catches up with them. Then the White Sox, I can't predict them too much because they seem to get hurt every year. Tim Anderson has injury concerns. Eloy, Moncada, Robert, I mean, the pitching staff, who knows? So I got him finishing 500. My Tigers, 72 and 90. I think there will be a few breakout stars with Torkelson and Riley Green. But other than that, I think it's another rebuilding year. Hopefully, Javi can hit 250 or better. Uh, anything better than last year would be great. And then the Royals are an interesting team to watch because they could deal away some key pieces like Salvi at the deadline to get a good return for him in the future. MJ Melendez, Vinny Pascanito, Pascanito and Bobby Witt Jr., the young crop coming up and going to be key pieces for the future. So they will be a fun team to watch. The AL West has three teams making the postseason. The Astros will win the division and get the number one overall seed. And then the Mariners and Angels will be those last two wildcard teams in. I think the Mariners are due for another run. The Angels finally get back to the postseason. The Rangers, you know, have a disappointing year in the athletics. Well, they can't do much. So we'll start with the Astros repeating to win the AL West yet again. The World Series champions go back to the playoffs. I think 100 wins is very doable for this team, even with Altuve out for possibly two months. Uh, but everyone else is still back. And they even added Jose Abreu. And this team lost Verlander too, but Hunter Green, have you ever heard of him? He's going to be solid. And this rotation is still very good. The Mariners, they look to get better. 
Julio looks to build on his successful rookie year last year, and I'm sure he's hungry for a deeper postseason run. Uh, the Angels, you know, we got to talk about Otani, of course, you know, in his last year, the deal. If they don't make the playoffs, then I think he's definitely gone. Well, maybe, you know, if they're not in contention at the deadline, they can trade him too. But I think they will be in contention, possibly add to it, because they know this could be the last year with Otani. And then Trout, you know, getting back to the postseason since the first time in, I think, eight years, I believe it is, maybe nine. Uh, and then the Rangers, disappointing year, I think, DeGrom's injury concerns, you know, always every year. Uh, Simeon, you know, had a rough start to the year, finished strong. Seager, but I just don't think there's enough depth there for the Rangers to last in this AL West. I think they're in the AL Central. I think you're looking at a playoff team, but just this division, I think, will beat them up. And there's going to be one team that, you know, fails to meet expectations. And I think it's going to be the Rangers. Then we have the Athletics with who knows what's going on with them. This name, Christian Pache, you know, this solid prospect they got in return for Matt Olson, and now they DFA him. So who knows what the A's are cooking up over there in Oakland, but maybe a relocation. Moving over to the National League, we're going to start with the National League East. And I have the Braves winning this division and the Phillies being a wild card. And yes, you're looking at that correctly. The Mets will not be making my playoffs. Um, we'll dive in that in a few seconds here, but I have the Marlins finishing up with over 70 wins and the Nats finishing under 50 wins, which is very hard to do MLB. But we'll start at the top with the Braves. The Braves, on paper, very good team. Uh, one of the favorites to win the World Series. You know, they did lose Dansby in the offseason. So that'll be a big question mark. Who's going to play short this year? But, you know, everyone else pretty much returned. And it just seems like the Braves can just put up really good numbers with decent guys. I think Michael Harris is a breakout star. You know, last year what he did in the rookie, in his rookie year was great. And I think he's going to look to build on that. The Phillies, obviously, adding Trey Turner is a huge huge move for them that was the only weak spot they had last year and they filled it and now I think they're just going to be just as good or even better and then the Mets you know adding Justin Verlander to the mix I'm um, losing to Grom but getting Verlander you know having coming off one of his best career years I don't think it's gonna be enough for these Mets you know gonna get let down yet again um, Polar Pete and company it's gonna be a good squad but I think one of these three teams won't make the playoffs and I think it's gonna be the Mets then the Marlins look to build off Sandy Alcantara and the young rotation. Uh, the hitting is still a question for me in Jazz Chisholm's health, and that's why I have him here. Then the Nationals, there's not really much to talk about as they're in a huge rebuild, but with Mackenzie Gore, CJ, at, CJ Abrams, those two guys in the Juan Soto deal look to build off uh, a fresh start here and become superstars for this franchise. The NL Central, I have the St. Louis Cardinals making the playoffs, and that's it, only winning this division. The Brewers don't make the playoffs because I think hitting finally gets to them. The Cubs, well, around 500, I think is very doable for them. And then the Pirates and Reds rounding out the division. But the Cardinals with Arenado and Goldschmidt, as long as those two are healthy and then with contact bats around them, they will be very good this year. The rotation looks just as good as last year. It's all the same guys coming back. Uh, and they can, then they signed Wilson Contreras to replace Yachty, which I think is a, you know, not better defensive option, but hitting wise, I think it is. Then the Brewers, well, you know, I think they're going to blow up at the deadline. I think they're going to be kind of in contention, but trade Burns, kind of like a hater. And like they did last year with the Padres, trading trade a hater, but then got Taylor Rogers back. So far, so forth. But I think Burns is gone. I think they're going to get rid of him. Uh, you know, he's very, he's not unhappy and pissed off at the Brewers, but he was, you know, not feeling good after this arbitration meeting. I think they could look to move him at the deadline and get some good pieces back. The Cubs are a team that signed Dansby Swanson in the offseason. Cody Bellinger looking to bounce back with his new team. It's going to be an interesting team to watch. I think they will play some very competitive baseball this year, but it just won't go their way towards the end of the year. And then the Pirates and Reds have some great young guys that are going to be fun to watch uh, this year with the Pirates having O'Neill Cruz and Ralston Contreras, the Reds, Nick Lodo and you know Joey Vados possibly last year which will be you know sad to see him leave but you know it's just a tough ending for him and last we have the NL West with the Padres winning this division the Dodgers squeaking in in a wild card and yes the Diamondbacks are going to be my other wild card team getting in and then the Giants and Rockies round out this division so we'll start with the Padres on paper probably one of the most loaded lineups in baseball the rotation is just as nasty. I mean, you got the bullpen who, you know, is okay at times. Hater's still there. Hopefully he can have a bounce back year. But, you know, when you have Soto, Machado, Tatis, uh, Hassan Kim even, Jake Cronenworth, 
I mean, I feel like I'm still missing a ton of bats here and it's, it's still a loaded lineup, but the Dodgers did lose a lot, but it's the Dodgers and this team finds ways to win games. The pitching is always going to be there. You know, Bueller more than likely out for the year. I think they're still going to get good contribution from Kershaw and Urias and Gonsolin. And, you know, they'll find guys to get wins, Dustin May. And then the Diamondbacks are my surprise team to make the playoffs. I think with Zach Gallon and Merrill Kelly, a great one-two duo that no one is talking about. And then you got young guys like Corbin Carroll, Jake McCarthy. I mean, even Christian Walker. I think those guys are going to have a great year. And then Ketel Marte is going to have a huge bounce back year. So I'm banking on the Diamondbacks to be the surprise team of the year. I think they're, you know, one of those teams that you could see break out this year. And I think they will. Uh, and then you have the Giants who, you know, are regressing. And I don't know what direction they're going to go for this year, but it doesn't seem like they're going to be contending um, when they enter September. Then the Rockies, well, no one knows what they're doing. They signed Chris Bryant last year, got hurt. But the good story for them is, you know, Chris Bryant could come back and have a great year and give them some more wins than I'm projecting him here at 63. But that's going to be it for the video this time. Make sure you guys come back later this week to see the MLB preseason power rankings and my bracket, my postseason predictions at the beginning of the year. All you have to do to stay up to our channel is be subscribed to our channel. Until the next time, the Bench Buddies are out. Mm -hmm.